congratulations on this movie, La Usurpadora Musical. How was your reaction when when uh, they told you that you were going to be part of a musical in Spanish with the singing cast? Did it cross <laughs> your mind that you were going to sing something in Spanish? Well, thank you. First of all, I love the background. This is an awesome setup back there. Um, I um, was shocked <laughs> to, to answer to answer that bluntly. I was very surprised and shocked, pleasantly surprised. Um, and I think my my concern was nerves. You know, <laughs> usually you don't think about that if you're getting a new project. You start to get excited. You're reading. You're like, I want to do this. Nerves come later. This was nerves immediately. Um, and I was like, well, okay, so far I'm speaking, when I'm reading the script, so far I'm, I'm speaking in English. Um, it doesn't look like I'm singing, although later I do. And all of those things were, were, were terrifying, but I had heard of the telenovela. I had known that I knew that it was so important to the culture and that these songs that they were very, that the production was very nervous about, they were important to the culture. So to put this all together, it was a lot of pressure for a lot of people. I feel like I had maybe the, I'd have to say the least because I was the 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 rookie, you know, coming in, not really supposed to knowing know anything, but the pressure was there for everyone, to be honest. Um, and uh, I I couldn't say no. It was too much. It, 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 first of all, it was very well written. Um, always wanted to work in Mexico especially under a situation where it's, uh, you know, an actual Mexican production. Um, and then to be able to play a character so silly and over the top um, was something and get to get some comedy back in, which is strangely actually how I started my career, um, was a lot of little comedy, um, was, was you know, a, a blessing all around. But you're no stranger to singing, because I believe you had a record yeah. in the past. Yeah, well, I've always, I've always been a part of Music's always been a, it's been a huge part of my life. I've always been in bands mm -hmm. growing up ever since I was 20 years old. Um, toured around the world with some, um, I, but it's usually been more rock and roll, punk rock, little certain, you know, things like that. So um, I'm not classically trained. I don't technically know what I'm doing. I played the guitar my entire life, but it's power chords. I don't, you know, it's, it's just cheating my way through that. So this was a true experience of, oh, wow, we're, You know, I get to work with Sebastian, this, you know, uh, the pheno phenomenal music producer, um, recording for real. You know, this is uh, this is exciting stuff. Perfect, perfect. Well, we remember you from a bunch of teenage movies from back in the days. And I also remember you from a League of Extraordinary Man, ER, a watch yeah, yeah. to remember. Now you have sure. a role like sort of like an American gigolo. Can you tell us a little bit more about your character, Chad? <laughs> Chad. Chad is Chad. Um, I think that we we kind of uh, uh, Santiago, uh, the director, who's phenomenal. He um, helped. He he just kind of I guess just liked what I was bringing to it, and then we kind of worked together and trying to like what else can we do with this guy? Like you know he's just written on the page, very simple. What physically can we do? So I was like. I think this guy is Miami. He needs to be tanned. So let's, so I went and got tanned. I, you know, I, I felt like he was, had no hair. So I was like, all right, let's get waxed and all this kind of stuff. And like, let's be, you know, very gaudy and very, uh, very Miami. You know, it was all the specific clothes and fake tattoos that were, you know, expressions and sayings and all, all this kind of silliness that we kept throwing to it. Sometimes when you watch the movie, you'll miss little things because it's hard to see them. Um, but the preparation for it was pretty funny. I'll put it to you this way. Every time I walked on set, people for sure laughed. So <laughs> there was definitely something that made me stand out in a, in a way that I think hope, hopefully um, helps the film and just adds to the film. Yeah. To deal with this. <laughs> I still don't even know. I mean, I'm I I, I mean I'm obviously it wasn't no, we blew it up. That was that was real. There was no CGI on that. But you know, the car was already beat up. There was it wasn't like a you know, 
uh, I don't think it was brand new or anything like that with the one <laughs> that exploded. But um, it was a little scary. It was, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was one of the last days of shooting, of filming. Wow. wow. And I was fortunate enough to be a part of that. We were out, uh, outside of Puerto Vallarta and this really great mansion. And um, it was really late at night. And, you know, you get worried about those things. You hope everything goes right. Isabella's holding a freaking torch <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're putting it in this thing. And uh, there was a couple times it exploded where I was, you know, tied up on the balcony. I could feel the, feel the, the heat. The heat. Oh, yeah. And that was a bit, <laughs> that was a bit intimidating. But it was, it was, hey, I had a great view. I probably had the best view out of everybody there of watching this thing explode. Thank you.